Hello all, welcome to Tech Capture. So in this video, we are going to see how we can prepare for a Google Cloud Professional DevOps Engineer Certification exam and how we can pass this exam in a very first attempt. So if you are just blindly following your Google Cloud services and preparing for this exam, then let me tell you this will be difficult for this exam because this exam is a bit uh, different from all others exam and you have to study few things which is not a part of Google Cloud services or a native services. So I'll explain what additional things you have to go through and what additional things you have to learn before going to this exam. So this is something I am not telling you because this is included in the exam syllabus or you can say the exam guide as well. You can go through that and then only you can confirm without following me as well blindly. Okay. So I already passed this exam a couple of days back that's why I'm in a good position to guide you and share my experience based on the latest exam okay so we'll go to a uh, next slide and we'll try to cover what are the things we should prepare for this exam so there are few key areas five section we could say for this exam so in which first is a site reliability engineering which is SRE principle and this is the most important for this a DevOps engineer certification exam. Even it is not uh, wrong if you say it as a SRE exam instead of a DevOps exam as well, because this is mostly related to the Google SRE best practices. Okay, so I would say the fifty percent of syllabus is covered along these SRE best practices, and these are not related to only a Google Cloud, and which is something additional you have to work on so there are few concept you have to know before going for this exam or before studying or starting preparation for this DevOps engineer certification exam so what are these best practices or what are the key concept in site reliability engineering so first you have to know about the difference between the DevOps and SRE or the relation between DevOps and SRE what are the roles and responsibilities of the SRE engineer and then once you are a bit aware of that role then there are few key concepts here so first is sla when you are working as a devops engineer you have to define sla for your service so it is agreement between the provider service provider and the person who is using that service even all cloud provider have slas for all customer which is published on their slide uh, on their site you can just go and visit the check the sla they would have mentioned their SLA in a percent 99.99 or 97, 99.99. This kind of SLA they have provided. And if you are not missing that SLA, the provider has to pay penalty or a compensation to the user. Then we have again a concept of SLO. So it is not agreement, but it can a target which is set internally for that service. So I'm not going in deep for each concept. I'm just introducing what all things you have to prepare. Then you have a SLI to measure your SLA and SLO. So it will include your availability, durability or a latency of your application, which are the key indicator or service level indicator for your application and which will just useful to determine the performance of your overall application. Okay, then there is an error budget. So error budget is somehow related to your uh, deployments or your release or releasing the new feature in your application. So you have to measure or you have to determine the error budget first and this error budget will determine how frequent you can do release or a downtime for your application. Okay, so this is a key concept again. There will be a few questions on error budget and SLO. So that you have to remember then toil so toil you can say it is a repetitive manual task whatever you are doing in your current project so the main task of sre is to eliminate this toil to avoid a burnout of the employee or burnout of the resources okay so as i say resource it is just manual resources or a employee who is working on that particular project okay so toil elimination is a prime task of a sre engineer or a devops engineer so that you have to study about then pl blameless postmortem so this is something about incident management once incident happened or there is any outage happened then you have to prepare a root cause analysis and a complete report for a postmortem but this postmortem has to be blameless so you should not mention any name who is responsible for that outage 
so just say an example i am performing one deployment and during that deployment something happened so it might be operational mistake or manual mistake or a technical mistake you could say or a technical error and during that time due to any technical issue there is an outage happened during the deployment or the deployment got delayed which caused an outage then my name should not be there in any of the report causing a blame on me or it should be completely blameless postmortem and there should not be a name of the person mentioned in any of the report whenever you are performing a root cause analysis or preparing the report for your incident so that is something a blameless postmortem you should be aware what is a blameless postmortem how to prepare a report whenever you are preparing report for your major incidents like p1 incident p2 incident there are different terminologies for each incident in a separate organization so i am sharing this sre google handbook so to study all abo concept you have to go through this sre handbook and only there you will get this concept because this is a google exam so you have to follow a google a recommended best practices for sre so i'll share this in description as well so you can go through this link and just go through the, all the concept i have mentioned here and if there are any additional concept in this workbook you can just go through i would suggest just go through this run book once you will get better understanding of sre best practices and this is very very important for this exam now i'll move ahead for a next section so next section will be a managing service incident so whenever you are working in a production or a sre so srv is a mixture of i could say the development and ops like devops and they will be definitely working on production as well so if you are already working in a production environment you have a good understanding of type of the issues and severity of the issues you are getting and how you should respond whenever there is an incident so these all best practices will be asked in the exam so incident management how you will respond to the incident so it how you will determine okay you have to actively involve other folks in the incident management is it a main minor incident or is it a major incident how you will do impact analysis how you will set up a call or a breach to resolve that incident so all these best practices you have to know about and the mitigating incident impact so it depend upon how this incident occurred so if it is due to a sudden change or a release which went live then you at least have option to roll back the change or there is another option to suppose if you are having three instance and one of the instance is having issue and all users hitting that instance getting an error or downtime then to mitigate that issue the current solution for you or immediate solution is to route traffic to the available instance so at least user will not face any downtime and then you can work on the resolution of that one instance so that is the best practice whenever you are working on a production incident first to try to see how we can mitigate the incident when you notice it so roles in incident management so in sre google sre handbook there are a three roles mentioned for uh, incident management that is incident uh, commander operation lead and communication lead so we'll just uh, read the i would say you just read the roles and responsibilities of all these three roles so incident i missed spelling here so just forgive me for that so it should be incident commander so what incident commander will do will just take a responsibility of the timeline of the issues he will just keep involving required people and there are other roles also who will be incident commander then operational lead who will actually working on resolving the incident that will be always a operational lead or ops lead then have a communication lead which works on communicating a timely update of the production issues to the end users or a stakeholders so there are these three different roles you have to go through and understand the roles and responsibilities of all these three roles so you will be getting handful of question on this during your exam then a burnouts and handover so suppose there is a major incident going on in a production which is impacting highly to your customer but at the same time suppose your shift is getting over so what you should do you should just leave behind that incident and you will just leave for the home or how you will leave so there is a sre best practice for that also you don't need to stay long and don't need to extend for that issue 
you can just hand over to the next shift person or a on-site person before leaving for the day so to avoid burnout it's not recommended that you should work long hours as per a google sre handbook okay so that's things you need to learn how you should handle this major incident and that is asked mostly in this question uh, mostly in this exam then we'll see the other areas like implement service monitoring strategy so here how you will implement logging and monitoring i would say now here are few gcp services you have to learn about you have to study about thoroughly so not all google cloud services for devops engineer but there are few services i would say six to seven services you have to study about and other services you should have at least a understanding what these services is used for but this loggings and monitoring you should understand a completely what are the different types of log audit log data access log event logs then how you will create a log syncs what are the different ways to create a log sync how you will store your logs in a storage bucket how you store your log in a bigquery in which case you have to store in bigquery if you want logs for suppose five years of archival then well you will store this log so such kind of questions there will be asked in the exam and then the third party integration so support you how to integrate a google cloud log to a grafana or a splunk then how you'll send your logs to the third party tool and that things you have to learn about and then managing application log so suppose you are having your vm or infra level log at your cloud logging but you install suppose any application or a database on your virtual machine so to get that log you have to install a ops agent by default these logs won't set up in a google cloud logging so you have to install ops agent so that it will fetch logs related to that process as well and then monitoring of resource and sli so sli as i said it would be availability so for availability you can set up uptime check for latency you can check the cloud trace or other metrics you can set then monitoring dashboards okay to measure all these graphs and performance you can set up monitoring dashboard and you can create custom dashboard also for a group of vm or i would say group of services and how you can share this dashboard so you can create a single project which will monitor all your cloud resources across the projects so there are best practices for that also so once you understand this you will be able to answer that question and you can follow the google documentation for the best practices for monitoring and logging then the custom dashboard and access level that i already mentioned then filtering logs for a security so there are few questions on a flunt d filtering where you have to filter the logs to avoid any sensitive content being displayed in the log so that also you need to understand and that is also present in a google cloud documentation so just go through each of this topic and you will get definitely question on these topics so ops agent as i already explained to get application level monitoring you have to install the ops agent inside your vm okay and then building and managing ci cd pipeline this is again a important whenever there is a devops then there is a concept of ci cd pipeline continuous integration and i would say delivery or a deployment so how to set up a ci cd pipeline using a cloud build how to set up a build triggers it might be a automated trigger or manual trigger how you will set up a approval for your production deployment so all these things you should know about and integrating third party tools like jenkins pinnacle gitlab so there will be questions on this also how you will set up a jenkins are you going to set up it on a virtual machine or you will use a kubernetes engine how you will set up a spinnaker so these all best practices you have to go through a google cloud a documentation then the security feature so there are few security features like binary authorization for a gke you have where only the signed or attested images will get deployed into the google kubernetes engine and again we have vulnerability analysis with artifact registry which will keep scanning your container images and it will just detect the vulnerabilities from your container images so these services how you can implement then optimizing the service performance it's mainly related to your cost and improving your sli so it include a cost optimize a cost optimization how you will reduce overall cost of your project then how you will set up a crowd cloud trace 
to detect the latency for your application so trace is mainly used to detect the latency or identify where the application is taking more time to serve which of part of your code so it will just detect that cloud profiler to measure all performance level indicator i would say for your application so it can be your cpu or a ram utilization so profiler is useful to measure that and then billing and tco it is total cost optimization and billing how you will analyze your billing how you will export your billing so all these features are mentioned here how you will set up billing alert so all these things also so you will get couple of question on these things also so that's it for this devops engineer certification exam but again i'll reiterate the main thing you have to go for is sre handbook so i'll just show you a google sre handbook for a couple of minutes so this is a google sre handbook this is the link i will place this link in description as well so here you could see all these points which i covered the toil alerting monitoring you have to go through this incident response so you have to go through all these sre based practices and it will help a lot in exam okay so just go through this also how sre is related to devops so this is official google documentation for sre okay even though it is not part of google cloud but it's best practice for all google services okay so in this exam and this is a prime area where the most of the question will be asked and then i would say for sample question there are a couple of site i would suggest where you can go for sample question so don't treat sample question as a dump i sometimes i hear back from multiple people that using dumps is not a good but i would say don't treat the sample question as a dumps because a each sample question will act as a requirement you will think on that okay what is the best option and why this is the best option if you keep understanding and doing analysis of each question you will get better understanding rather than reading the documents as well so don't think that as a like or dumps just keep reading the sample question and try to understand why this answer is correct and you will get better understanding of all services so for sample question you will uh can you can refer uh, exam topics or visual apps or even there will be couple of question from google sample questions also from here also you will get a couple of question for this exams so you can refer that also and even if you type in google sample question for devops engine you will get multiple sites so you can refer that also you will get better understanding what type of questions will be there for devops engineer exam and you still need any kind of help you can reach out to me on my email id i'll try to help you on this exam so i wish you all the best for your devops certification exam and if you have any query related to any of the gcp services or any certification you can reach out to me so thank you for watching this video we'll see you again